Today I'm going to show you five ways that letting go makes you significantly more attractive. And when we're talking about being attractive, we are primarily talking about romantic relationships, but also friendships, good opportunities in your life, more money, more happiness, all of these things you can attract to yourself significantly easier paradoxically, when you let go of your attachment to them. So in this video, we're going to explain how that works and how you can use it to attract more things to yourself. So when I say letting go of attachment to results, what do I mean? Basically, I mean, stop given so much of a fuck about everything going on in your life. We have a tendency to become very attached to results. We want everything to go a specific way, especially in our romantic relationships when we're talking to potential partners in job interviews and in our career. We are very attached to results, which means we have an energy of I need this to go a certain way. If I can control the fact that my partner is beautiful and attentive to me and I can make sure that they do these things for me, I get to feel okay. Or if I can control the fact that I have this amazing job, then I get the money and validation associated with it, then I get to feel okay about myself. These are essentially us externalizing our own needs so that they are being met by our relationships, our jobs, whatever. Those things kind of patch those holes within ourselves that don't feel so good so we get to feel okay within ourselves. The problem is that this then of course makes you extremely dependent on results because there's now external variables that you don't really have direct control over, no matter how much you might try to control, that determine your state of inner well-being. Somebody who is extremely results dependent and attached to these things, they lose their job, their person breaks up with them, and they feel like their life is over. Why would our life be over when these external things shift? It's because we have projected our own neediness. We need all of this to be okay. A specific way that we have determined that if all of these things are a specific order, then I am chill in here. But if any of this stuff goes haywire out here, stuff starts going bad in here and I really don't like that. So we attempt to basically control everything. That is the attachment to result that we must let go of so that we can paradoxically become more attractive to these things that we actually want. It's kind of confusing, but stay with me. So the very first way that letting go makes you more attractive is it gives you the ability to be yourself. And I know that sounds super cliche, like the most generic advice of all time, but truly being yourself is actually really hard to do when you are attached to results. When we're attached to results, we're so sold on the idea that like this job is going to fix my life or this person, they're just going to everything will be f just peachy forever. When we are in that mindset, it becomes very tempting for us to kind of cut corners. We'll fluff up our resume a little bit. We'll act a certain way around this person. We'll try to pretend that we are something we're not. We'll try to agree with them. We'll try to make them feel a certain way about us. This at first seems harmless. This is like something a lot of people do, but all of these things are inherently manipulative. Because of our internal feeling of lack, because we feel like we are not okay, and they will make us better. We project our insecurity into the world by pretending we are something different from ourselves. This is one of the craziest things about people who they're afraid of being abandoned for not being good enough. They're afraid that like people will see through them. They abandon themselves. The very first thing we do, we abandon ourselves. We give up on our actual personality and start building up a fake one. Being yourself is about taking that energy back and not pretending. It's about accepting the feeling of wholeness within yourself and taking that energy to feel confident that you're good enough instead of projecting that energy outwards and then hoping that other people then dub you good enough. When you go up to ask somebody out and you really, really want them to say yes or you're gonna feel bad about yourself, you have given them all of that power to determine your internal state. So by letting go of the results, by not giving so much of a fuck about everything that goes on, by saying that, you know, this one person, this one job's probably not going to transform my whole life, and that's okay. You relax a little bit, which in and of itself is much more attractive. If you are relaxed and calm and keep your energy within yourself instead of projecting it around saying, are you the one who's going to make me feel okay? Are you the one who's going to make me feel okay? Are you the one who's going to make me feel okay? When you take that energy back and say, I'm the one who makes me feel okay. How's your day going? We have a tendency when we approach people with that neediness to project like, I want you to make me feel good. 
And people don't like that because that puts a tremendous amount of pressure on them right off the bat. Same thing with job interviews. When you're like, I really need this job, you send the signal that you don't belong there. You send the signal that I'm not good and I want this to make me better. On an energetic level, that repels, which is not necessarily what we want to do. So paradoxically, by letting go of that attachment to everything, by relaxing a little bit, it's easier for us to get it. And that's the second way that letting go makes you more attractive. It makes you less needy. You don't go into situations projecting your energy like, I need this to go this way for me to be okay. It makes you significantly less controlling or manipulative, which is a thing that a lot of nice guys or nice girls are actually very manipulative. People who are trying to be nice are very frequently going around monitoring their own behavior, not doing step one, not being themselves, trying to be an idealized perfect version that fits what they have imagined the other person wants. This seems harmless at first, but is actually very deep forms of manipulation. It comes from an internalized perspective of this person will never like me the way I am, so I have to be nice, I have to do these things for them to get my needs met. It makes it clear that you are more interested in this person behaving a certain way, like you want them to be happy so that they will like you. You're more interested in making yourself happy through them than you are interested in them. And that energy is very off-putting. Whenever somebody detects that you actually just want something from them and that's what you're in it for, you don't really care that much about them because that is the energy it projects. Even though you might trick yourself into thinking, oh, I'm doing this because I like them. Yes, but you're doing this because you like them and you think that they will patch a certain hole within your like wounded psyche. And in order for them to do those things that you want, you try to butter them up and behave all nice and get them their favorite food or whatever. And that might work for a while, but after a point, it becomes very obvious that you don't have a leg to stand on. You are just, you become a yes man or a yes woman. You become somebody who is a people pleaser and you're constantly going around trying to make this person feel a certain way so that you get your own needs met. And that energy feels very repulsive. It's the energy that is like of a salesman. I, say, I want something from you, so I'm doing and saying these specific things. And another way neediness appears is in the inability to set boundaries. Maybe you have a hard time in a relationship saying, you know, I, this is what I want, this is what I like. Maybe you're the kind of person who's always kind of giving in to what the other person wants. Same thing. It's a form of neediness. You are afraid to stand up for yourself because you don't want to threaten the dynamic of the relationship, which implies this relationship is more important to me than my own needs, which is kind of twisted because the only way that works is if you are dependent on the relationship to feel okay and your emotional core, which once again means you are too attached. You become like an emotional vampire. But on the other hand, if you are not overly attached, if you are not overly needy, you project confidence and peace within yourself other people find that very attractive because they, it's uncommon for people to be whole within themselves, to have that grounded sense of, you know, it'll be cool if we went out, but it'll be okay either way. Or if I got this job, it'll be great, but also I got other options, I'll figure something out. That sense of calm and surety that comes with not projecting this one thing as being your future, you have to have. That balanced perspective of like, you know, I got other options, it'll work out. That is very attractive precisely because it is the opposite of that neediness. It tells people that you will not be an emotional vampire trying to drain them for your needs, which allows people to feel calm and comfortable and open up around you. When you are okay within yourself, it frees up everybody else around you to be themselves. It gives other people permission to open up and relax, which is something people really like, and this makes you more attractive. The third way that letting go makes you more attractive is it gives you the ability to take action. So often people, when they have significant attachment to exterior results, when they're trying to figure out, oh, I need this, I need this, I need this, we become paralyzed by analysis. We become very slow to act. We become racked with indecision. We are afraid to make moves. And this is not very attractive in relationships. If you're about to make a move with somebody and you show hesitation, you show insecurity, you show fear, you show that you're so worried about what they are thinking or how you might come off or this or that, you're so worried about making sure everything goes okay that you are afraid to do what you want to do. You show that you are willing to censor yourself, give up your own power for 
kind of keeping everybody else happy, once again, you project that you're not being yourself. You project that you're not comfortable and you are needy. That becomes your energy flow. But on the other hand, if you are detached, if you think, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's see what happens. You become able to enter action with boldness. This is a law of power in Robert Greene's work. When you're able to take bold action and not be paralyzed by analysis, when you're able to say, you know what? I'll figure it out. I got this. You stand head and shoulders above so many other people who are afraid, who are indecisive, who have projected this thought that I need this to go a certain way. Boldness is very attractive in romantic relationships too. The ability to just state that you like somebody or how you feel or kind of be flirtatious or go up and speak to somebody. These are things that often cause crippling anxiety in those people who are so attached to results, who can't let go. When you can let go, you free yourself up to so many new opportunities and situations because you can try. You don't have to succeed. And the ability to try something, just simply to say, hey, let's see how it goes, that in and of itself is very attractive because not many people do that. A lot of people are paralyzed by that indecision, which shows they have no solid sense of self. They have no confidence and they are willing to let everybody else's thoughts and ideas determine how they feel. When you take that power back, when you say, nah, I'm kind of the one who's going to determine how I feel. You don't have to be a jerk, but when you have that solid sense of self within, you no longer externalize and you're able to take bold action and do what you feel is right and follow your own hearts, part of that being yourself thing. And that boldness in action and the ability to go up and talk to people, to ask people out, to just ask for a raise, to go pursue the things you want in life, to feel that self-confidence that you get from detaching from the connection and attachment to individual results makes you significantly more able to attract almost anything into your life, like money, uh, relationships, jobs, all of those come with that increased self-confidence that comes from that boldness and willingness to take slight risks because you realize, you know what, it's probably gonna be okay either way. It might be a little uncomfortable, but it's unlikely that this one job will save my life or ruin it. So really, why should I act like it will? Once you've internalized that, it's pretty easy to let go. But until you do, you're gonna be captivated by the illusion of this one person, this one job is gonna fix everything. And that creates that indecision, that indecisiveness that we go, oh, it has to be a certain way. I don't know what to do. So I do nothing, which is very unattractive. The fourth way that letting go makes you more attractive is it gives you the ability to actually focus on the other person or the other thing. When we are attached to outcomes, when we are hyper-focused on micromanaging these scenarios, what we're actually trying to do is control how we feel, right? So we become very hyper-focused on micromanaging our own internal state. So when we're out on a date, for example, we're having a conversation, the other person might be talking and you're hearing blah, 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 blah. And what you're actually hearing is your inner voice going, what do I need to say to make them think highly of me? Are they liking me? Oh, did I mess up there? Did I do this good enough? Did I do that good enough? You're not actually able to fully engage, to listen to the other person, to actually get to know them. Especially if you have done the thing so many people do where we idealize, we have imagined them to be a certain way. Oh, they're so pretty, they're so attractive, they're so whatever. Uh, I need them to like me. Oh, did I say the wrong thing? Did I do this wrong? Did I do this? We are engaging with these lenses over our eyes. We're, we're unable to actually be present in the conversation, which makes it significantly harder to connect. And once again, we are obsessing over our own state. We are so connected and attached to these desires for like specific outcome that we can't be present in the moment. Very unattractive, but what is extremely attractive is if you are able to be present in the moment. If you're able to give that person, that situation, that job interview, whatever, your complete focus, your genuine attention, and ask them questions and like connect with them on a deep level, that is very uncommon. That immediately stands out. When you are able to actually listen to somebody and not have your inner dialogue constantly distracting you and micromanaging yourself and trying to control everything. When you have the willingness to just listen and see and get to know them, for who they are without hoping for them to do something for you, you free yourself up to become way more connected, which has the paradoxical effect, of course, of making them more attracted to you. They will like you because you stand out because you're the one who actually listens to them, who actually can pay attention, who's not so focused on yourself. When you're able to listen to people, you're able to understand them on a deeper emotional level and make those connections that 
is way more attractive than those superficial conversations where you're trying to micromanage their feelings in order to get what you want. And the fifth way that letting go makes you more attractive is that it allows you to be more open. When you are closed off, when you are insecure and need things to be a certain way, you try to become very controlling. You're only happy in a very small set of circumstances where everything is going kind of the predetermined ways that you have decided will allow you to be happy. And when things go off those rails, you're gonna become very insecure and very petty, very upset, very jealous, because all of a sudden things aren't going our way so much anymore, right? When you are open, you can experience things and things happen that are unexpected. Maybe this thing doesn't go your way. And instead of reacting with jealousy or pettiness or anger, you can just be like, oh, all right, well, that's fine. That, once again, is immensely attractive because it shows that you are confident within yourself. It shows that, you know, you're gonna be pretty much happy and chilling regardless of what's going on. Openness allows us to test things out, to actually try them, to go on a date with somebody who might be a little bit out of our comfort zone, to apply for a job that, you know, might be out of our arena, to try things that might be hard or new or a little bit scary because we're just open to seeing what happens. We don't say this has to go a certain way or I have to have this or this has to happen for me to feel okay. When you have the presence of mind and openness to say, you know what, I didn't really necessarily think this would be the kind of person I would go out on a date with, but why not? What do I have to lose? Might as well try. That frees you up to experience so many more things. When you free yourself up to not have those preconceptions that limit you. When you are in a situation of saying, you know what, I'm gonna meet my true love at a library and it's gonna be after five o'clock on a Friday. Like that level of specificity, which seems crazy, but a lot of people have this huge list. They need a partner to be like all of these things, right? Might happen, but it also makes it very strict in your mind. You've decided that I will only feel okay if this happens. If anything else happens, I'm not having it. You shut yourself off to opportunities based on your preconceptions, opportunities that might be better. Once again, you now have to control that external environment. You become needy and clingy. You're gonna, if, if you find that one person who meets all these things, you're gonna be like, oh my God, I cannot let this person go. This is the person for me. This is the person for me. Guess what's gonna happen? you're probably gonna scare them away or develop a kind of toxic codependent relationship because it's not built on mutual love and respect, it's built on you needing them to meet all of these preconceived boxes. The openness that comes with the letting go of attachment means you have the ability to try new things, to experience new ideas, to not prejudge everything. And that is also very attractive. The ability to be flexible in different situations, to kind of go with the flow and experience things and not freak out. When people shut themselves off to new experiences or say this has to be a certain way or become very insecure in these circumstances where things move outside of their control, that is a turnoff. That is very unattractive because you see people react negatively. You see through the facade. Once again, people have built up this image. They're pretending to be, you know, this great person. Oh, I'm, all, I'm always loving. I'm always nice. I'm always this. And then something happens and they're not nice anymore, right? The niceness goes away. The illusion gets seen through in those moments where they are not open. They are not able to adapt to new circumstances, new environments. It's very unattractive when you see somebody put under pressure and they crack and they turn into a completely different person. Openness, the detachment from those specific results, the detachment to saying, you know what? It'd be cool, but eh, something else will happen. It'll be cool either way, right? Like I would love to go out with this person, but also, you know, if they don't want to, then it's probably not meant to be anyway, right? That opens you up to experience so many things with a detachment that is freeing to your experience, but also doesn't put pressure on the other person that they have to be a certain way to make you feel good, which once again, projects that you are more attractive to everybody else. People will want to work with you. People will want to be with you because you're flexible and open and don't judge them for the way they are. You don't need them to be different for you to feel okay. That makes people like you when they don't feel judged or that they have to be a certain way for you to feel okay. So once again, detaching from you needing everything to be a certain way makes you more attractive. And that is the sort of paradoxical way which letting go of your dependency on results can actually make you more likely to get those results that you want, even though you now don't need them. Kind of confusing, but that's how it works. It's because we stop projecting this needy energy of like lack of, I need this to be okay, which keeps everybody like, whoa, get the fuck away from that guy. When we stop, when we realize that we are whole within ourselves, we have the power within ourselves. It's not that person's job. It's not that job's job to make us feel 
whole within ourselves. And those things could never f do that for us anyway. And now if you're thinking, well, yeah, that sounds great, but like, how do I detach? Obviously, I kind of need things to be a certain way for me to feel okay. I've always kind of needed that. That's pretty human, right? You're not completely wrong, but there is a way. Do not despair, my friend. Problem is, a lot of these wounds come from experiences we have in our childhoods. We become internalized patterns that we believe and integrate into our behavior that then determine how we feel about ourselves and how we externalize those needs throughout the rest of our life. But what you need to do next is check out this video right here where I go over those internal child patterns, what they are, where they come from, most importantly, how to heal them and move forward in your life to free yourself to begin the process of letting go of that externalized energy, pulling that power back into yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Check that video out next. We'll see you next time. Bye.